Lifeguards are the unsung heroes of the summer. I've saved at least 500 people. If you want to be a lifeguard, you better get used to long days in the hot sun and lots of time in the water. And it's hot and it's exhausting. Many lifeguards work 40 hours per week, 10 hours per day, and spend about 14 hours in the water every week. They could do as many as eight rescues in one day. You can hear people screaming and yelling. As you might have guessed, lifeguards have some strict rules they follow to keep them in shape, looking good, and ready to rescue. First time you save a life will mark you for the rest of your life. Intense training and focus required. It may look like lifeguards have cush jobs hanging out at the beach or by the pool all day, but it's actually pretty grueling. First, every lifeguard is required to undergo at least 100 hours of intensive training in order to work at the beaches and swimming pools. While it may vary from pool to beach, here are the requirements to be a lifeguard for continental pools just to give you an idea of specifics. Lifeguards must be at least 15 years old. They must do the breaststroke or freestyle swim for 100 yards without resting. Candidates must also be able to do a feet-first surface dive, retrieve a 10-pound brick from the bottom of a minimum 8-foot deep pool, and bring it to the surface. And they have to tread water for one minute without using their arms. Once they qualify to work as a lifeguard, they have to adhere to strict rules. They are not allowed to carry on casual conversations with pool guests while at their posts. One lingering conversation could mean a serious drowning. They're not allowed to be on their phones, either. Anything that takes their focus away from the water is strictly prohibited. It's such an exhausting job, the Red Cross recommends that they take five to 10 minute breaks every hour to reset their minds so they can stay vigilant about water safety and keep their focus on the swimmers. Beauty regimen. Lifeguards don't like to wear creams or makeup on their faces before their shifts. The more cream to use, the more sweat there is. Creams and makeup inevitably run from sweating and swimming in the water. It gets into their eyes, burning and clouding their vision. Instead, Miami Beach lifeguard Brittany Austin prefers a spritz of rose water over her face and shoulders in the morning. It revitalizes her skin without that heavy skin cream feeling. And on a hot day, she cools off and refreshes herself with a quick rose water spritz. It totally does the trick. Swimmers and lifeguards tend to do the bulk of their skin moisturizing after their evening showers. A non-greasy face and body cream is ideal, so they can hop in the water the next morning without that gunky lotion feel. Beach lifeguards know the importance of proper foot care. Sand and salt water can really dry out the skin on your feet, so it's important to have a good exfoliating and moisturizing routine at night. Some swimmers put socks on over the lotion for maximum skin hydration after a long day in the hot sand. But the most important product in a lifeguard's bag is sunscreen. Lifeguards can spend up to 10 hours in the burning sun every day, so a quality sunscreen is an absolute must. They have to remember to apply a new layer of sunscreen multiple times per day to prevent sunburns, sunspots, and premature wrinkles. No bling on the beach. Beach lifeguards know that wearing jewelry at work is a total rookie mistake. The ocean and sand are cunning jewel thieves. They make short work of snatching rings and bracelets right off of you without you even noticing until it's too late. So lifeguards wear their engagement rings after their shifts are over and on their days off. That is the only way they can be sure they'll hang on to them. Otherwise, that gorgeous diamond ring could wind up on the bottom of the sea like that necklace in Titanic. Vaseline is a female lifeguard's best friend. There's a secret hack that makes being a female lifeguard a lot easier. If you don't have a thigh gap, which most lifeguards don't, it's important to put Vaseline on the thighs to prevent chafing. Vaseline is a lifesaver. They also use Vaseline on any swimsuit line to keep the suit from chafing the skin, and also under the arms for when the rash guards rub the wrong way. Vaseline is good for protecting small cuts or any wound that burns in the salt water, too. Look in any lifeguard's gear bag and you'll likely see this essential item. Hydrate like the camels do. You know the myth about camels being able to store water in their humps? Well, it originated from the fact that camels drink a ton of water, and lifeguards do too. Brittany Austin shared that she drinks a full thermos of water before she even gets out of bed. Since she is working in the hot Florida sunshine all day, she needs to stay hydrated. So Brittany brings a big gallon jug of water to drink during her shift. By the end of the day, she has finished the whole gallon jug of water, proving that lifeguards really do drink like camels. To really enhance their hydration, lifeguards will add electrolyte packets to their waters. Thirsty anyone? Work out and stay fit. 
Some lifeguards work out on the tower during their lunch break to stay in shape and able to be at their best for rescues. Swimming out to sea to rescue someone requires a lot of strength and stamina. If you're stuck out in the ocean, you're gonna want a lifeguard who can go the distance to rescue you. So lifeguards will do practice drills, running, strength training, and of course, lots and lots of swimming. A regular exercise routine gives lifeguards the endurance they need for the job. The right swimsuit is key. Most people go to work wearing pants, shoes, and a shirt, but not lifeguards. They go to work in bare feet or flip-flops. They don't wear pants or nice shirts. Their uniform is a trusty swimsuit that stays put in any emergency situation. Many female lifeguards swear by Jolene swimsuits. They make sturdy suits for active people. These suits stay in place so there are no embarrassing exposures in the water. They cover up the important body parts so that water safety can be a lifeguard's top focus over wardrobe malfunctions. Crank up that sun protection. No one wants to leave the pool or beach looking like a boiled lobster. That's why, for a lifeguard, extra sun protection that goes beyond sunscreen is essential. UV protective clothing, hats, tights, and handkerchiefs for the face and neck are crucial additions to a lifeguard swimsuit attire. And one thing a lifeguard never leaves home without is a good pair of sunglasses. They have to wear shades that are super polarized to cut down on the glare of the water. Without their sunglasses, they would not be able to see a potential drowning victim as easily. Proper eye protection also allows lifeguards to see the sandbar, the contours of the ocean floor, and the rip currents. This helps them warn the swimmers of dangerous areas in the water. Rinse and repeat. Female lifeguards always rinse off with fresh water after workouts and swimming in the ocean. That's because salt water dries out your skin, and who wants to stay sticky all day? After every water rescue, you'll probably find a lifeguard rinsing her body with fresh water. Whether they are washing the chlorine off from the pool or salt water from the ocean, rinsing off is an important step for these ladies. It protects their skin and keeps them clean and ready for the next rescue. A dry suit is a happy suit. Ask any female lifeguard and they will tell you how important it is to change into a dry swimsuit after being in the water. It is not good for feminine health to sit around all day in a wet swimsuit. Some lifeguards will change their suits two or three times a day to make sure they stay dry in all the right places. No wonder Brittany has so many swimsuits in her drawer. Be like the Boy Scouts. You may not have noticed this, but there are no bathrooms or kitchens in those lifeguard towers on the beach. That means lifeguards must bring all their supplies with them to work. This includes fresh water for drinking and rinsing off, feminine products, food for the day, and anything else they may need. They look like they're camping when they go to work with all of those supplies, but they are just ready for a typical workday. And as the Boy Scouts say, always be prepared. Can you imagine working all day without access to a bathroom? Yikes. No buns and wet hair. Female lifeguards and swimmers follow one cardinal rule whenever they get out of the water. They never put their wet hair up in a bun or ponytail. Over time, this can cause breakage and major damage to the hair. Many of these ladies can share horror stories about their hair breaking, rotting, and even falling out due to the constant cycle of putting wet hair up in a bun. Instead, they recommend brushing out wet hair and letting it dry completely before putting it up. But when it's time to get into action, most long-haired lifeguards throw their hair up to keep it out of the way during a rescue emergency. No full bellies on the beach. Any lifeguard can tell you that it's a really bad idea to eat big meals while on duty. If they are too full from a big meal, they could wind up losing their lunch in the water during a vigorous rescue mission. So they prefer to eat several small meals throughout the day. This keeps their energy up and eliminates that after-lunch fog. With this selective snacking plan, they can stay alert and ready to jump into action. Lifeguards rely on food staples such as fruit, trail mix, protein smoothies, and yummy chia seed pudding to sustain them through their workdays. Emergency medical training is a must. Lifeguards are first responders. They get a lot of cases of heat exhaustion on the beach, as well as near drownings and water injuries. That's why all lifeguards must be certified in first aid and CPR. They are trained to recognize heat exhaustion on land, as well as swimmers in distress in the water. Treat yourself to an ice bath. Some lifeguards insist on taking ice baths when it's really hot outside to cool them down and keep them alert. Brittany has a pretty chill system of cooling down her body inside a large trash can filled with ice water. She stays in there for about eight minutes for maximum revitalization. That's one way to cool off. Flag system. Beach lifeguards have a national flag system that helps them protect people and prevent them from going in the water when it's not safe. The flags are the same colors as a stoplight, green, yellow, and red. Green means low hazard and it's safe to swim in the ocean. Yellow means moderate hazard. Red means high hazard. When the red flag is flying, lifeguards know to close the beach down and keep people out of the water. Reasons for red flags include lightning, hurricane surf, or bacteria in the water. If you see a purple flag, that's an indicator of marine life nearby. Moon jellyfish love swimming 
near Miami beaches in the summertime. In the cooler months, lifeguards look out for a scary creature called the Portuguese man o' war. That thing is the stuff of nightmares. Prevention is key. If you've been to a public pool or beach, you've likely seen lifeguards standing at the edge of the water, whistling and yelling out to the swimmers. That's because a big part of their job is prevention. They are trained to spot dangerous riptides and stinging sea life. It's their responsibility to warn the people in the water to stay away from the danger zones in the ocean. Likewise, pool lifeguards are tasked with policing the deck as well as the pool. They may have to scold you if you run on the wet pool deck or play too rough in the water. But don't take it personally, it's part of their jobs in order to keep everyone safe. What do you think about the rules that lifeguards have to follow? Did you hear any tips that you'll take with you to the beach? Let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and thanks for stopping by The Taco.